What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And if you're familiar with our channel, it has been quite a few months since I have done a power station review for you guys. Um, and I am very excited to be bringing this one to you. It is the brand new EcoFlow Delta Mini. Now, if you've watched some of my previous power station reviews in the past, I have reviewed other EcoFlow products. I've reviewed the EcoFlow River Pro. And while that was a very nice power station, I wasn't a huge fan of it because I thought some of the technology and stuff in it was kind of gimmicky. This one, however, I'll just go ahead and tell you right off the bat, I love this power station. In fact, it's probably my favorite power station that I own, and I own a lot. And it's the favorite one that I have ever reviewed, and there's a number of reasons why that I'll get into. Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by The More Expo, the Midwest's number one adventure travel consumer expo. Artemis Overland Hardware. They have one of the largest selections of overlanding gear available. Big Iron Overland Rally, where Overland Expo meets music festival. Long Creek Overland, your source for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and more. Outback RV of Texas, the best place for Overland Adventure trailers. And Moon, makers of the Moonshade Portable Awning. Let me start by breaking down the specs for you real quick. It is an 882 watt hour power station. It has a 1400 watt pure sign inverter and with their X-Boost technology, it can run electronics and appliances up to 1800 watts. It has a peak of 2100 watts. So if you plug in maybe a power tool or something and you turn it on, it peaks, you know, like at 2000 watts and comes back down for normal running, it, it, it will run that just fine. It does the X-Boost technology voodoo thing by dropping the voltage. So while it says it will run something that's pulling 1800 watts, in reality, it's lowering the voltage to actually give that appliance or electronic device 1400 watts. So it, it's not exactly powering something at 1800 watts. So just know that. But since it does have a 1400 watt inverter in it, there's not many things that are going to need that X-Boost technology anyway. It has five AC outputs. It has one, just your normal cigarette lighter style 12 volt output. It has two of the little five millimeter 12 volt outputs as well. And then on this side, it has four USB ports, one USB-A fast charge, two normal USB-As, and then a 100 watt USB-C, which is fantastic because if you've got a laptop, you know, that sort of thing that needs that much power coming through the USB-C port, this has got you covered. I'll go ahead and tell you one thing that I am disappointed in in the EcoFlow Delta Mini, and that's that it uses the lithium ion chemistry batteries and not the lithium iron phosphate. I get it. I mean, it does pack it into a little bit lighter size. It does weigh about 26 pounds, but the lithium ion batteries do not have the life cycle that a lithium iron phosphate battery does. So whereas some power stations can get 2,500, even 3,000 cycles out of them. This one does a respectable for lithium ion. It, it has 800 cycles, which, I mean, let's be real, 800 cycles of charging and discharging, that's a lot. And that's not, you know, after 800 cycles, it's dead. That's 800 cycles, it drops to 80% capacity. So just know that going into it. I do wish they used lithium iron phosphate to have crazy long life cycles, but even at 800 watts, I, this is going to last you for years. It's going to last you a very long time. What makes this thing crazy awesome, and, and one of the things that I actually didn't like about the River Pro that I, I've had some different experiences with this is just how stupid fast this thing can charge. It has an 882 watt hour capacity and plugged into a wall outlet, this thing will charge at 900 watts of input. That means this thing can go from dead to 100% in just over an hour and a half, which is absolutely bonkers that you can recharge this that fast. Now, there is that caveat, you have to have it plugged into an AC outlet and be able to input 900 watts. So if you are out camping, obviously you're not gonna have that unless you're you know, going to have a generator with you, which that kind of defeats, defeats the purpose of having this. Um, now, I, I did run into one problem. Um, one thing I love about this is it has a switch here on the back, or the side, I guess we could say. And with this switch, you can flip it between high input charging and low input charging. 
and that low input charging you can actually customize and set between 200 and 900 watts so if you want to you know do 200 watts input you can do that if you want to do 300 400 500 etc and you can change that i actually used this on my recent trip to kentucky i was recharging all my batteries my drones my cameras that sort of thing i was running my diesel heater off of this and went to plug it in my gladiator does have a 400 watt inverter um, in front of the back seats which i thought that's fantastic just plug it in keep this charged while i'm using it during the day unplug it at night while i'm running the diesel heater that sort of thing but for some reason this would not charge from my inverter and I have successfully charged a lot of other power stations with it. And just to, to verify that everything was still working correctly, I plugged my Jackery 1500 in it, which pulls about 300 watts from its power supply. And it, it charged just fine, 260 watts. So I don't know what the deal is with this. I don't know why it doesn't like the inverter in my Jeep. I did plug it into the 1000 watt inverter in the bed of my Gladiator. That It is a pure sign inverter. Maybe the inverter in the Gladiator is not a pure sign inverter and it doesn't like it. I, I'm not sure. But I did plug it into the 1000 the watt inverter in the back of my Gladiator and that worked great. Full power, 900 watts. So in a pinch, you know, on the trail, yeah, I can plug it in there and have this thing recharged in no time from the back of the Gladiator. Now let's talk design. I, I love it, but there's some things that I wish uh, were different. Uh, the, I, I think the boxiness of it is great. The two handles are fantastic. I can grab it with one hand and you know take off with it. Um, I don't like the fact that the display and the USB inputs are here and the inputs and the AC outlets and 12 volt are here. Um, I, I just think, I, I wish they were all on the same spot, like here in the front. I wish they were all right here, uh, just because it makes, you know, where you put this in your vehicle, if you're going on overlanding trips like I am, how you pack and do that Tetris thing to, to pack all your gear makes a big difference. You know, if you're using a power station like this, you want to be able to easily access the ports. And if I was using the AC outlet to charge my drones, I couldn't, you know, easily get to it. If I'm also using the USB ports to, you know, charge other cameras and that sort of thing and, and then having access to the display. So I really wish all the all the ports, all the displays, everything was on the front. But, I mean, I worked around it. it. It is not too bad. You can load it in like this and still have access to the sides like this. I, I made it work, um, but it, it, this would be a knocked out of the park game changer thing if it was all here on the front and all on the same side, at least. In the box, you get quite a bit, actually. You get a power cable. And you'll notice this does not have the normal power brick that a lot of power stations come with that you have to deal with. It's just this power cord because all of that stuff is built into into the chassis here so all you have to do is, is plug this into that and any you know this is just standard computer style cord and that, that's all you need you don't have to lug around a big clunky brick you also get your 12 volt car adapter this is what i was using when i was in kentucky to recharge this it will it, it did just fine it, it by the time I was done at the end of the day, it was fully recharged. But, you know, it'd be better if I could use this. But, I mean, this worked. You get a um, nice long MC4 cable to XT90 for solar input. Uh, you get the, the manual. And you get um, the 5.5 adapter here for other DC options, which I think is pretty handy. That's, uh, that's the, the first one I've ever seen that has that. And, uh, and, and that's it. With the car adapter, you do get about 96-ish watts of input, maybe 100 sometimes. Um, so about nine and a half hours, you could recharge this from dead to 100% with the car adapter. Solar input, this thing does pack an impressive 300 watts of solar input. And I, I gotta say, I'm very impressed with its solar capability. EcoFlow does make a very, very nice high quality solar panel to pair with this. In fact, I've got two of these. This is a 160 watt solar panel. And I gotta say, it's one of the nicest solar panels I've ever, I've ever checked out. And to be honest with you, 
I think it's probably underrated because I was testing this earlier on a not perfect sunshiny day and I was getting over 300 watts of input using two of these in series and that's not anything I've ever experienced before. So I, I really believe these may be underrated so that when you plug it in, you can get that max 300 watts of input um, because I shouldn't have been able to do that on the slightly overcast day that I had earlier. Uh, but crazy impressed with these, not super impressed with how these things fold out and how you uh, mount them. A lot of solar panels have, you know, little Velcro kickstands on the back. This one uses this case as it stand and it's kind of clunky i'm not real crazy about that but the quality of the solar panel and the output that it was it was given into the the delta mini i i can't fault that at all so i'll take that trade-off to have a crazy high quality solar panel that pumps in some power to my power station versus a little better you know folding design so big fan of these now let's talk about the display. I have always considered the EcoFlow displays some of the best of any power stations that I have ever tested. And this one holds true to that as well. It gives you all the information that you need. It tells you where your inputs are coming from. It tells you where your outputs are going from. It tells you how much is being input. It tells you how much is going out. It tells you a percentage of how much battery you have left. And it also gives you a time number of, you know, if you are charging it at 100 watts how much time does does it take to get this thing recharged or if you're you know plugged into a wall outlet and you're charging this at 900 watts how much time will it take if you're powering something off of this and it's consuming 200 watts how much run time do you have off of it all that is on the display and i think it's fantastic and i have no complaints with it but the one thing about this power station that i think sets this above any other that i've ever tested is the new app that ecoflow has come out with to pair with the power station and you can see and control and dig into the settings of this thing unlike any power station i've ever used before this made a huge difference when i was on my trip to kentucky because i could have this in the back seat i could have my app up on my dash and i can check the status of what i'm trying to charge i can check the status of how fast this is charging how much longer it's going to take to charge what its status is and it's absolutely incredible so with the app i can see the temperature i can see the percentage how many hours is left in the battery right now it's not consuming anything you got your inputs and your outputs you've got your ac output here you've got your 12 volt dc here you've got your usb ports here you can see each of them individually and you can go into the settings and change everything your discharge speed level if you want to you know have this thing shut off at 10 percent for for some reason you can if you don't want this to get to 100 percent charge but maybe 80 percent charge you can do that i don't know why you would but you can you can set your ac charging speed for when it's in that uh, slow charging method and go from 200 watts 400 500 etc and so if you if you need to charge it slower than 900 watts you can you can adjust your car output eight amps is the default you if you want to lower it you can um, you can turn on beeps every time you plug something in or push a button it'll beep at you um, unit timeout so if you want it to go to sleep after a certain time you can your screen timeout it just uh, went to sleep you can adjust that your ac timeout and, i mean there's just so much that you can do with this thing it's incredible let me let me plug some things into this and show you more Hopefully you can still hear me over the hair dryer, but I've got a hair dryer and my drone batteries plugged into the AC outlets. I've got a 12 volt fridge plugged into the 12 volt outlet. I've got my iPad plugged into the USB-C port, and then I've got a little USB fan plugged into the regular USB output. And you can see I'm pulling 25 watts on the USB-C. I'm only pulling one watt on USB. The fridge is pulling tw uh, 42 watts right now. We're jumping back and forth as the compressor's working. And then the hair dryer is currently pulling 542 watts. So if this were in the back seat and or away from me and I wanted to maybe turn the hair dryer off so you can hear me better, I can do that from the app. And now I have complete control over everything that's going on in the power station from the app, which is crazy cool. So right now I'm using, uh, let's, let's say 70 watts. 60 watts and at that i've got 
five hours of runtime, uh, currently at 43% battery. Let's, uh, let's turn the hairdryer back on and the drone batteries. There we go. So now I'm peaking at uh, 560 watts. I can run this for about 37 minutes if I just kept it on nonstop. So, I mean, just, I, I absolutely love the app. It is legit and not a gimmick at all. Now with every power station that I review, I always plug it into our Dometic CFX 355IM 12 volt fridge just to compare how much life a power station like this will get running a fridge because that's what we use this for probably most is, is for running a fridge on our, our camping and overland trips, that sort of thing. So I, everything is, is the same as it always has been. The Dometic is set to 34 degrees. It's got two two liter water bottles inside of it just to help regulate the temperature. It's done inside our house, which is set at 74 degrees. And this one did pretty much what I expected to do. It ran 62 hours and 43 minutes. So a good two and a half days running a 55 liter fridge is very good. It's, it's in line with most other power stations that I've tested. You know, it, it does better than the 700 watt power stations that I've tested and it's done worse than the 1000 watt power stations I've tested. So it, it's right there where it's supposed to be. And I, I think that is very respectable for a 882 watt hour power station to run a fridge for two and a half days if need be. And yes, this can be charged and discharged at the exact same time. So I'm currently charging batteries and powering a fridge at the same time charging it and it's doing everything perfectly. Now let's talk price. EcoFlow has always, in my mind, been one of the premium brands for power stations and their pricing has always been, I would say, slightly more than a lot of the competition. However, EcoFlow is getting pretty competitive out there uh, with their pricing and right now this Delta Mini can be had for $750. So for an 882 watt hour power station that does all of this with the app and the technology for what, what equates to 85 cents a watt hour, that's incredible. So I, I don't know how long that sale is going to last. You know, by the time you're watching this video, that sale may be off. I, I don't know. It's regularly $9.99, so since it's that premium price. But right now, for $750, bucks, this it, of all the power stations I've reviewed, with the ones that I recommend to people, um, if you've got $750 bucks to spend on a power station, this is the one I would buy uh, over Jackery, over Blue Eddy, over those you know the other comp competitors out there. 750 bucks for this I think is a steal and absolutely this is what I would buy. I do have a couple gripes about the Delta Mini. Not major, but I, I, do, I do want to put them out there. One, I do want to know why it doesn't charge from the AC outlet to my Gladiator. I did send a support ticket to EcoFlow to ask that question and when I get a reply back, I'll pin it in the comments so, so you know. And the other thing, uh, I've already mentioned kind of the design of this with the two um, two separate outputs on the sides. But, and this is really for every power station out there. This is 2022. Just about everything that we do can be powered by USB. So why, 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 why are there only four USB ports? I mean, look at this. There's, there's so much room here for more. Why are there only four USB ports? That makes no sense to me. Give me three USB-C ports, give me five USB-A ports, and, and there is no reason to not have a, just a crap ton of USB ports on a power station. I mean, they're super efficient, uh, they, they're super small, they charge just about everything, and I, I don't understand why there's only four USB ports on this thing. Uh, there really should be more. So I hope that was, was helpful to you. I, like I said, I've been very impressed with this power station and this, this is gonna be my go-to moving forward for a while on my trips because I do depend on these to keep batteries charged and that sort of stuff while I am out on my trips. And uh, I, I very much like this one and this is, this is my new go-to for, for a while anyway. I'll probably have to throw some other ones in there to test in the future, but uh, for right now, if, if I'm not testing one, 
this is the one I'm going to pick. So uh, if you've got any questions about it, leave them in the comments. If I overlooked anything, if you have experience with this and, and I overlooked any amazing technology or, or any stats or anything, be sure and, and, and let me know. And uh, you know, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. If you are you know, loving the, the content that we're putting out and you want to support us in a tangible way and gain access to our GPS data from our trips, check out our Patreon. The link is in the description. And go to longcreekoverland.com for our Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye.